Okay, hi, we're back together. I'm Paul McGowan, and let's see what kind of question we're gonna run into today. Hey, thank you very much, by the way, for these great questions. I've received quite a number of them. They're really stimulating, and I, I do appreciate you asking them and giving me the opportunity to share some time with you so we get to know each other a little better. Uh, unfortunately for me, it's sort of a one-way conversation, but I get out. They let me out of here once in a while, so I, I get to go out to various uh, people's homes and shows and get to meet people and they, hey, you know, I saw you on YouTube or whatever, and it, it's really great. It's a real privilege for me. Thank you. Thank you very much. Chris in Tucson, Arizona. With all the hype on DAC specs and chasing the next great off-the-shelf DAC chip, how much do you think the DAC chip itself contributes to great sound quality versus how much do the power supply, digital lens, and output design, with or without preamplification, each contribute? Well, that's a great question and one that I talk about quite a bit. The, the short answer to that is they contribute quite a bit. The DAC chip is certainly important. But I would say the single biggest contributor to the way a DAC sounds can be found in the output stage, given that all the other parameters are, are sort of equal. So I'll give you an example. In DirectStream, which is our FPGA, Field Programmable Gate Array based DAC designed by Ted Smith, there, a decade worth of work has gone into the actual DAC chip, if you will. Now, the chip happens to be a big board. It's hardly a chip. There's a lot of stuff on it and a lot of work that goes into it. But even in that DAC, which those of you that do the updates, we do these free updates on our DAC every six months or so, and that you almost get a new DAC, you can see that the sound differences, the improvements in sound quality that people get for free with our upgrade process are huge. I mean, they often say, I, it's like I have a new DAC. Every six months or so, I get a new DAC. Not only just new features, but new sound quality. So there is a good example of how a DAC makes a heck of a difference. That said, the output stage of that DAC is critical. One of the things that Ted did on the DAC is spend a, a huge chunk of time building that analog output stage. In fact, if you look inside at DirectStream, the majority of the real estate, there are two boards in there, the majority of real estate is the analog stage. The power supply and the analog stage take up this much, and the digital stage where the DAC is takes up that much. So all that effort went into the analog stage. And it's true not just for our DAC, but for just about any. I'll give me another example. ESS is a very popular manufacturer of DAC chips. They make some great DAC chips. And we, we use those DAC chips in several of our DACs that are not direct stream. The Stellar series, the Stellar Gain Cell DAC, for, for good example. And there we've got a nice high-end ESS-based chip. Now, if two manufacturers were to take that chip and, or just let's just call it two designers, the exact same chip put into two different DACs with different design philosophies, not of the DAC, but of the power supply and the analog stage, they would sound like night and day different. I'll give you another example. Dan Wright. He's a really brilliant designer and small guy, and I have a small guy, small company, Mod Wright Designs. And, and, and he does some of the favorite work that I've had the privilege to listen to. So Dan uses, I'm going to say, whole-hum DAC chips. That isn't true, and that's unfair. He uses good DAC chips, but that's not where the effort in a Mod Wright DAC goes. If you look at that, that thing has tubes bristling out the, the top of the thing. It, he has vacuum tube rectifiers in the power supply, vacuum tubes in the output stage, Lindahl transformers coupling the whole thing, and all of that, the majority of that DAC, it's all in the analog stage. 
So if you were to take the same DAC chip that Dan uses and put it into a very different DAC, and maybe instead of using all the tubes and the Lindahl transformers and all that stuff, you were to just throw a couple op amps onto there, like, well, CD player manufacturers do that all the time. They'll take a great DAC chip and they'll throw a couple op amps. Call it good, right? Specs are great. You know, point zero 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 ad nauseum, one percent distortion. They can sound like crap. Same DAC chip difference is in the analog stage. And those of you that are watching this that are going, Hrumph, that's bullshit. You know, I mean, really, take the time as I have done, as many of our uh, fellow manufacturers have done and and listen find two competing DACs that the only difference is in the power supply and in the output stage that use the same Sabre DACs or the same Wolfson DACs and if you can't hear a difference on that then a your system has not got much in the way of resolving power or you're not really listening because I can demonstrate this to anybody anytime the door is open, we're in Boulder, Colorado, you come on down, and I would be happy to demonstrate the difference if you come. So that said, I haven't actually prepared anything, but let's just say I could and have, and it's, it, it really is. I, I, anyway, I'm not going to defend that. I hope that answers your question. So the answer is, yeah, you betcha. Okay, thanks for watching, and sorry for the little profanity. Bye-bye.